I'm Jorge Ribas, and you're wondering. So I've been driving a car now for like 16 years, and the joy has long since worn off. I hate the traffic, and if you ask my friends, I wasn't even that good at it to begin with. Problem is, I can't hire a chauffeur, so the only logical solution I can think of is a car that drives itself, like in that movie, Minority Report. Look at them, they're not even watching the road. And they're getting freaked out by Tom Cruise jumping on top of them, but still, I'm jealous. Where's my robot car? Well, it turns out the answer is not that far away. I'm here at Virginia Tech University, where engineers from Torque Technologies and Virginia Tech have built a car that can drive itself. And Patrick, I just drove down from Washington, D.C. It's like a four and a half hour drive. There were times during that drive where I got a little tired where it would have been nice if my car was intelligent enough to drive itself, at least for part of the way. Now this car, which you guys call Odin, can do that, right? Yes, uh, Odin is capable of driving through urban environments. Despite what it may look like, Odin's not driven by remote control. There is no one in the driver's seat. Andrew's just cruising along, watching the computer. To prove that, I took a ride myself. The car drove about 100 yards, made a three-point turn, and drove back to its starting point. So we've reached the end of this road segment and turning around. This is not a pre-programmed move. Depending on the geometry of the road or anything else here, it'll adjust to figure out the best way to go back and forth. So how does it work? A complicated system of navigational devices, cameras, and scanners. So there's a total of seven mounted on the vehicle. Uh, there's three at bumper level. So what this is doing is it's sending out laser beams and scanning all around the car about 12 and a half times a second. So these are looking for other cars, they're looking for people, they're looking for trees, any sort of other obstacles that you might find. The two on the front are looking down at the road, so they're looking for where the road is, where curbs are, where very small obstacles are, where potholes are, things like that. So how many decisions is this car making per minute or per second while it's driving? It's recalculating its path about 10 times a second. Torque Technologies co-founder and CEO Michael Fleming notes that while the technology is fast approaching fully autonomous cars, society might not be ready yet. So it's that, that slow fusion of that technology and, and, and the culture in, in today's society, understanding the limitations and trusting that technology. And us on the, the technology side have to be very mindful of what we stamp ready to be released. Do you ever foresee in our lifetime having this technology out in the public? Yes. You're already starting to see some of it. You may not realize it. You're uh, starting to see autonomous parallel parking. I think you're going to find lane following as well, where now an operator can sit back and the, not only does the vehicle maintain speed control, but also maintain steering control. I think that in the next 10 to 15 years, we will see the introduction of autonomous cars. Um, it seems that the direction we're going in right now is we have our standard lane, we have our high occupancy lane, our HOV lane, and then maybe in the future we have our autonomous lane. So is the future yet for the robot car? Let's let the future meter decide. <laughs>